And actually, as this is a uh, budget and planning meeting, I should turn to Mrs. Pullman. I was going to let you run with say, it. I was going to slide right through here, but no, Johnny. Uh, that's okay. I wouldn't have minded. Okay, action item A, which is increasing the proposal to increase the price of breakfast and lunch by 25 cents. Good evening, Board of Trustees and Superintendent Dugan. Um, just a little opening statement to get the ball rolling here, I guess. Um, in the last three years, the Nutrition Services Fund has been infected by the implementation of the wellness policy, the conversion to an enterprise fund, the imp implementation of the Deloitte Compensation Study, and a steady rise in inflation that has taken its toll on our cost of goods. Uh, our current financial situation to date, um, as of the close of the month of February, we are $645,000 under the negative. Um, we've begun to make adjustments back in November when we saw this trend starting um, with adjusting our menus, adjusting our staffing, and looking at things with a lot more critical eye. Um, um, if I can excuse me, could you introduce the folks at the, at the oh, table, please? I'm sorry. I'm Mike Supple, co-director of Nutrition Services. Joan Moncton, co-director of Nutrition Services. Ken Green, operations. Thank you. Um, since we started to make those adjustments, um, we, from month to month, we've been performing better this year than we were last year. Um, in our current situation, if we are able to meet or beat our figures for March, April, and May, um, where we made $487,000 last year, um, we would go into that final month of June at a loss of $158,000. Um, that does not take into consideration um, $75,000 worth of product inventory that we had to throw out due to the beef recall, and a budgeted two hundred. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And two hundred fifty thousand dollars subsidy um, budgeted to the nutrition services fund if it was necessary. So that's why we come before you today, um, looking to adjust the prices um, for the paid students only. Um, to help offset the cost of the increasing food and fuel costs that we're experiencing, the uh, increase in the labor dollars that we're spending to run our department. And I guess I would just open it up for questions or... Okay. Any questions? I, maybe, I think there are a lot of questions on this item. At least I know I have a few. Um, but I'll, I will go, of course, last. So perhaps we could start and just go around the table on this one. Um, might make it a little easier to manage. Dan, did you have any comments or questions on this particular item? Jody? I just wonder, Mike, um, how do our prices compare with other school districts? That was given to us. It's not our, our prices are relatively in line um, with the other school districts. Okay. And Based on the state director's meeting in March um, down in Carson City, um, all the district's food service operations are looking and pursuing price increases for this next and year. And that's only Nevada, though? That yes, that's just, just, just Nevada. So what about other parts of the country? Do you have any of that information, or is that applicable, do you think? I don't have any um, other states to compare it to, but if uh, you'd like me to get that information, I well, can. It's it's. It's a question I have, but I don't, I don't want to direct you to go to a lot of trouble right now, so that's yeah. okay. Well, I mean, one thing, as I look at costs that make up our operation, um, I it's a checking with my counterparts in California when it comes to the requirement for the half pint milk, an eight ounce carton of milk, we pay anywhere between 31 to 32 cents a carton of milk here, where compared to the state of California, they're in the 23 and 22 cent range. So there's a I, I have a question on that. Um, I'll just interrupt since you that specifically. You know, we have joinder bids uh, when we buy cars and all kinds of other things. Um, and there was the mention that Clark County has, uh, you know, gets a price break. Uh, has there been any exploration, you know, in either, you know, being able to, you know, gather together on a joinder bid or benefit from California bids or anything like that? We have, um, unfortunately, when it comes to dairy pricing, uh, there's a cost of the milk crossing the state line and the commission that has to be paid. Um, but in regards... Is that a federal law or something? Yeah, it's part of the Dairy Commission of Nevada that they hold 
Oh, well, uh, great. Maybe we can talk to the governor about that. Yeah. Well, <laughs> also um, looking into helping control some of those costs, uh, a new dairy has just opened up in Urington. Um, that is kind of state of the art and up to more current production of milk with longer shelf stable and expiration dates that um, we will probably look to, I'm looking for the opportunity to go out there and take a look at that dairy, but then also open up the bid for the dairy so we would actually have competition amongst the dairy business here in town because milk is probably our biggest expenditure within the Washington County School District as far as the breakfast and lunch program is concerned. Back to you, Jody. Well, that's it. Thank you. Okay. Um, when we were back at Nationals um, and talking, you know, to some of the other vendors, they were mentioning that we're required to go out to bid for food service this next year. Is that true or not? There's the way the contracts are written with, um, I guess, food service management companies. There's a possibility that we may have to go out to bid this year, if not the latest. I mean, request for service, please. A request. It's not a bid if you're doing services. But. Right. Well, it's it's a request for service, and part of it is um, the cost structure, whether it goes to a fixed fee or a flat rate. And a lot of this has been dependent upon vendor rebates from suppliers. Um, Washoe County, everything is purchased via Washoe County School District purchasing requirements and whatnot, so there is not. A, any rebate that doesn't go back into the school district but you don't get the rebates nutrition services gets the oh, rebates okay. yes yeah. um, but Sodexo does not there are other companies Sodexo will say in California what when they do their purchasing some of the income that they will recognize would be rebates um, based on volume that they purchase from vendors like <coughs> Tyson chicken or whatnot so all food service companies it's meant to streamline the bidding process where some people hide costs within um, their proposals because they will get they are depending on the rebate piece this is something that will turn all the rebates back into the school district itself and my other question was um, it sounds like from all sides you're getting slammed by the enterprise fund how, how different is the pricing structure or service um, if we went to an outsourced situation instead of an enterprise fund? What? What's an, what do you mean by an outsourced well, situation? Well, if, if, if we had contract for service, and maybe that's what we, we have, yeah. but does, are all contract for services end up as enterprise funds? Can I take and, a stab at that? As no, a, as a and, and I would like to know what kind of resource does Sodexo help you in in figuring out strategies and things like this? Or are you guys kind of on your own? If we ask, they'll help. <laughs> <laughs> but also, they're aware of the numbers that we're generating this year within Washoe County School District. Um, I, it's pretty safe to say I believe in Nevada only Washoe and Clark County are the enterprise funds school districts running nutrition services um, everybody else is part of the general fund or a special revenue fund in uh, Nevada in Nevada yeah